Hi, and welcome to today's Biznology Digital Marketing Webinar. I'm Mike Moran, founder of Biznology and a senior strategist at Conversion, a leading social consultancy. I'm the co-author of Search Engine Marketing Incorporated, now in its third edition, and sole author of Do It Wrong Quickly, How the Web Changes the Old Marketing Rules. I'm a veteran of IBM, managing groups in IBM.com for eight years and retiring from IBM in 2008 as a distinguished engineer. Today you'll be hearing from Jeff Perkins of QA Symphony, who will present how not to suck at marketing. But before we start, we need to recognize our sponsors. Barn Razors, a full-service digital and social media solutions company that builds brands using proven relationship principles and ROI. Gagalamp empowers companies to amplify their social media content by leveraging employees, partners, and resellers. Try Gagalamp for free today. Garris Digital, a full-service digital strategy firm that reaches deeper into the conversation than any other agency anywhere. And QA Symphony, a leading global provider of QA testing software for agile developers, named by Gartner as a cool vendor in application development for 2015. Learn more at qasymphony.com. As we wait for more attendees to join, let me review the format of our webinar. As you can see on the screen, our Biznology webinars last just 30 minutes. You can easily fit them into your busy schedule. We record each webinar and we'll email you that link later this week. During our speaker's presentation, you can use the GoToWebinar controls to ask a question. That orange arrow opens and closes your controls. If you have a question, simply type it into the box labeled Questions at any time during the event and press the Send button. I'll select a few questions at the end of our webinar and pose them to Jeff. While we're waiting for the last few attendees to join, I'd like to remind you that the Biznology monthly newsletter and daily articles are available for free at biznology.com. So if you're not already a subscriber, we hope that you'll sign up now. Thanks again to all of you for spending 30 minutes up with us. We know how valuable your time is, so let's introduce today's speaker. Jeff Perkins is Chief Marketing Officer of QA Symphony, a leading global provider of QA testing software for agile developers. QA Symphony's innovative software platform helps companies increase efficiency and create better software. Prior to QA Symphony, Jeff spent eight years in senior marketing and sales roles at PGI and Autotrader.com. He started his career grinding it out in the New York City ad industry at Saatchi and & Saatchi and Havas. His experiences range from traditional to digital, B2C to B2B, and agency side to client side. Jeff received his BA from American University and MBA from Emory University's Gazetta Business School. He's a frequent contributor to several marketing publications and a speaker at many industry events. He lives in Atlanta with his wife and two daughters. So if you've ever struggled with digital marketing, this is the webinar for you. Jeff, take it away. Thanks, Mike. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being here, taking a little time out of your day. I hope everyone had a great Labor Day weekend. Um, yeah, so this is a, a topic that I think is is kind of uh, interesting for, for everyone to think about. It's, it's, you know, what do you do when you're not performing well in your job? Or what do you do when your marketing programs are not performing well? Um, because for many of us, that's that's life, trying to to, to fix things that are broken or trying to get better. Um, so that's what I want to talk about today. Um, so feel free to uh, join the conversation on Twitter, um, and we can use the hashtag don't suck. Um, so I so, uh, hope you can join in some, some conversation. Uh, a little bit about um, me and my company. So I work at a company now called QA Symphony. Um, like Mike said, we make the software that helps people who develop software test the software they're developing. And that's a bit of a mouthful. But it's, uh, you know, really um, our goal is to help companies that are developing apps uh, either for consumers or for businesses just um, develop those that software faster and better. Uh, and so feel free to check us out at qasymphony.com. Um, a few personal things about me. So I'm a, I'm a dad. I have two daughters. You can see them here. Um, it's funny, just with my... Uh, 
my older daughter now is seven, and uh, people look at her hair and they're they're amazed because then you, you've seen pictures of me. You may, some of you may see me on the webcam now. I you know obviously I have no hair, um, but I did at one point, and so it's it's always a joke that people are like, well, she didn't get her hair from you, Jeff, but actually she did she did get her hair from me. So there's a picture of me when I think I was four years old. Uh, you could see the luscious head of hair on my head. Um, but, uh, you know, so that's a bit about me. If you want to keep up with me, uh, you know, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, these slides will be up on SlideShare. You can also download them here. And I have a blog called singlemindedproposition.com. I invite you to check that out at your leisure. Uh, so let's, let's begin. Um, so th this webinar starts with a story about a trip I took to Google. And, um, you know, Google is an amazing place. If, if you've never gotten a chance to go visit one of their offices there, it's just, it's incredible. And the thing that blew me away about Google was the cafeteria. Um, so you walk into the cafeteria at Google and there's snacks and there's like a barista making es espresso and they have all kinds of different uh, candies and healthy snacks and unhealthy snacks. And what the interesting thing about Google is they put the unhealthy snacks usually in a, um, uh, in a container where you actually can't see. It's labeled what the snack is, but you actually can't see it. And the healthy snacks are in more of the transparent containers. Uh, but they feed their people really well. The friends I have worked there joke that uh, when people join Google, you gain the Google 15 um, because there's always so much food around. And, and it's amazing. And so my, uh, my account executive at Google took us to the, the Google cafeteria uh, where we um, saw this amazing spread. The day we went, they were doing uh, oysters in the, the kitchen in, the, in a wood oven, and they had this soup, and they was like, oh, go check out that soup. It's made by this James Beard award-winning chef who was there that day. And, and I, I sat there, and I was, like, I was like, this is amazing, and I got all my, the food on my plate. And I said, okay, where do I go to pay? And it was like, it was like that scene in a party where the music just stops, and everyone looked at me. They're like, pay for a lunch, this is Google, silly non-Googler. Um, so it was kind of a, it was a fun and, and funny experience. And so, you know, but everything there is free. Even the, the James Beard Award winning chef soup is free. Um, and this is just like an amazing thing for me to see just because, you know, I grew up um, in the ad industry business. It was a tough business. Um, you know, there wasn't a lot of, there weren't a lot of free lunches in that business. And to have a company where they feed their employees breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day is really an amazing thing. And, and I joke, but it's like, I was like, where am I? Is this heaven? Um, I've never seen uh, or experienced a place like this before. Um, and wouldn't it be great if, if, you know, we all worked for Google? But the reality is uh, we don't all work for Google, right? Most of us uh, don't work in companies that resemble Google. Most of us. Uh, work in companies that resemble in a tech from office space, right? Um, and, and this is the guy we work with every day. Um, most companies are challenging places. Not that Google is an easy place to work, but um, most companies are, are not like Google. Most companies, there is no free lunch. And so, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of interesting to think about um, the jobs we have and the companies we work in. But, um, you know, I want to share a story of not from my current company, but from my previous employer. I, I worked for a company called uh, PGI. Um, some of you may have heard of it. Uh, we are a global, we were a global provider of uh, audio and web conferencing services. And, and really, so we had a, a major focus on helping people collaborate, whether you're doing a, a phone call or a webinar like we're doing today helping people collaborate and communicate more effectively through our services. And so PGI had gone through kind of an interesting history with marketing where, um, you know, they, they had kind of had this, a bit of a revolving door for a while of different marketing leaders coming in and out. And, and the result was uh, a bit of a messy marketing ecosystem there. So, um, so when I started at PGI, this was the logo. Um, so it was kind of a, a cool logo, you know, it looked cool. But, um, you know, PGI actually had uh, relatively low brand awareness. And when we showed this logo to people, the most common question was, what's uh, 96i or what's PBI? They actually couldn't read the logo. And so when you have a, a low awareness brand and a logo that was almost too abstract to read, um, that, you know, that, that's a bit of a problem. 
Um, so, so that was kind of problem number one we saw. Um, in addition to the PGI brand, we had a lot of other brands that had just developed over years, and there was no oversight of these brands. So it was, it was a bit of a mess. We had product brands all over the place with different names and different logo treatments, no consistency at all across our portfolio. Um, and, you know, this is, this is what, um, you know, in marketing circles, uh, they sometimes call logo soup. Just uh, there's a lot of different logos all together, but nothing really connecting. Uh, so, so I thought it would be, you know, as, as the lead marketer there, I thought it would be funny uh, at our annual holiday party, we were doing a, an ugly sweater theme. And so I put all of the logos on one sweater uh, to try to make a point about we have a mess of logos here. Uh, we have to just try to clean up some of these logos. Uh, unfortunately, everyone just thought it was the coolest sweater ever and wanted it for themselves. So I guess I didn't really make my point very well. But, um, but it, it's tough when you're trying to build one brand, right? As marketers, we know building one brand is hard. Trying to build multiple brands, all with finite resources, is really hard. Uh, when it came to PGI.com, this was the homepage, uh, so a, a country finder. You know, so this is something that you saw on websites probably in the the 90s. Just the, all right, the country finder to get to different regional websites. It's uh, we know today, uh, country finder really uh, is not a great first user experience uh, on a website and is a, a killer for your SEO in many cases. So our our website wasn't working that hard for us, but if you got through to the country you're trying to go through, you saw a website that looked like this. And uh, it was very confusing. So as a user, you would come here and it's, it's what do I want? What do I need? There's a ton of stuff. So say you need um, web meetings uh, or online meetings. So you found that category. You would go to a page that had six online meeting options. And so how do you choose? How do you figure out, well, what, what do I need? What's right for me? Um, the fact is we were uh, confusing our prospects. And what happens when you confuse your prospects is that they just close your website. They leave. The bounce rate on this website was incredibly high because it was just too confusing for people to figure out what we offered, what they can buy from us, uh, whereas our competition had very clean, simple websites uh, that were really we, we knew we we're, were driving a lot more acquisition than our website. So our website was, was a big problem for us. Uh, another thing that was interesting is that our website was internally managed by our IT department. And, um, and this, this can be a problem sometimes because, you know, today you have tons of cloud hosting that guarantee, you know, 99.99% uptime. Um, you know, hosting on your internal, with your internal IT resources, uh, you don't see that done that much anymore. And, and the problem was when we tracked the website performance, uh, the website was actually down about 8% of the time. And when we went and asked our, our IT uh, partners, they, you know, our website's down a lot, what's going on? Uh, their answer was, well, it's only 8% of the time. That's not bad. And what we found out was we had people who were managing the website who were not experts in managing websites. They were experts in network systems and audio conferencing bridges and a lot of other things. Uh, and they just said, oh, you're, you're an IT, you manage the website too. But they didn't really proactively manage it and they weren't checking it to see if it was going down. And, and for a site to be down 8% of the time uh, in, in this day and age is almost unthinkable. Sites should almost never be down, right? Uh, and this is not a site that was getting millions and millions of users. It was you know a couple hundred thousand a month. So, um, so it was a, a real, real problem for us. Um, when it came to our, our digital presence on search engines, so here is a term like online meetings, which would be very important for a company like PGI to rank for. Uh, and you could see we were on page seven uh, for online meetings. And the old joke uh, that you hear uh, in marketing conferences is that where's the best place to hide a dead body? Uh, page two of Google, uh, because we people never get there. So page seven of Google we knew that people were really never going to find us in the search engines. Um, so then when it came to other kind of search, paid search, right? So you could always buy your way to the top of, of Google search results. Um, but uh, the, the way that we were managing our Google AdWords campaigns was not very smart. So if, if say, you typed in, how do I meet Miley Cyrus, right? Um, Miley Cyrus, obviously, this is something that probably a lot of 
uh, teenagers would try to, to type in. They're very interested in uh, meeting Miley Cyrus. Um, uh, we would serve up uh, to, to that phrase a free tour of our iMeet software. Um, so obviously this was the opposite of our target audience. We did not need to um, target people who were interested in Miley Cyrus. Uh, so so it, it really, we, we had a big problem. We had a big problem. And you know, you, when you started the company, you have a clean slate for a while, but after a while you own the problem. And I would come into work every day, I was like, God, I, I suck at my job. Um, now it wasn't totally my fault that I sucked at my job, but it was like I owned it. I was the VP of marketing. I was the one charged with with uh, finding some solutions to these issues. So um, so it's a, it's a pretty tough feeling when you feel like you're just not performing and you're not doing a good job uh, in marketing. Um, but you think about the landscape today, and, and this is a, a great chart from uh, Scott Brinker. Uh, marketing is, is very, very complicated today. It's very, very hard. Um, you look at this landscape of just marketing technology out there. Uh, where do you start? What, what do you buy? What do you use? Um, it's all great technology, but at the end of the day, um, you know, the, it, it could sometimes make your life more challenging having all this technology out there uh, than, than making it easier. Um, technology sometimes creates more problems than it solves. Um, and, and, you know, you think about marketing today, and it's just like so many technologies and so many acronyms. And, you know, I, I just pulled like a smattering of acronyms. We love acronyms in marketing. Um, but you look at all this, you could actually start to think about, wow, I could actually talk in complete sentences without really saying a word. I could just use all acronyms. And, of course, it just makes me think of uh, uh, the ultimate acronym, WTF. Like, what are we doing as marketers today? What, what, what are we doing to ourselves? Why are we creating such a complicated world to operate in. Um, so, so, you know, I kind of sat back and said, all right, where do I go now with this? You know, we're, our marketing program is underperforming. I'm going to probably get fired at some point if I don't turn this around. Um, what do I do to make this work? What do I do to make this happen? And so I really, um, I, I think the first thing that we did is we just decided to have laser focus on a few things. And, and for marketers, this is tough today because I think marketers generally are, uh, ADD types, we, um, we, we like to kind of focus on not just what's in front of us, but the shiny objects ahead of us. But to fix a broken marketing program it really requires laser focus. Uh, and you have to kind of adopt this mentality where, y yes, you can do anything. As marketers, we're creative people, we're innovative people, you can do anything, but you can't do everything, right? You can't do everything. You have to be smart about what you try to do. Uh, we adopted at, at PGI what we called a quick win strategy, where we tried not to take on any project that would take more than actually two weeks at a time. Um, and this is kind of, you know, a lot of people talk about agile marketing today, uh, but this was our approach. We didn't want to uh, take on these six-month projects because we, we needed to get work now. Um, so I encourage you as marketers, if you're struggling, uh, reject anything that's going to take more than six months. Figure out what you can do. So, uh, for example, a, a simple data sheet or brochure could be something you work on that you can knock out in two weeks, but actually can make a big difference to your sales team, to the organization. So figure out what are those things that you can get done quickly and go after them aggressively. Uh, avoid bottlenecks. Um, in any organization, especially larger organizations, um, there's going to be people who get in your way of things that you want to do that you think are going to help the business. Um, so marketers today have to be very resourceful in avoiding these bottlenecks at all costs because the last thing you want to do is get in a, a six-month to 12-month RFP process on a technology or to have a big project spun up about how, how to align your technologies and your servers with your website. Um, all of that stuff takes too much time. It takes more time than any marketer today could possibly have. Um, and, and I always say marketers today have a very powerful tool in their arsenal, and that's that's your corporate credit card. Because SaaS, all of the, the new and innovative SaaS solutions, you can buy on your credit card, and you can implement very quickly, and they can make a big difference to your business. Um, you know, we talk a lot about this term of shadow IT. Um, you know, IT professionals uh, today are very worried about how much spend is going out of their IT budgets into departments like marketing, right? Uh, Gartner actually projects that marketing is going to be a bigger IT spender than the IT departments in the near future. Um, 
but but it's very important that marketers are looking at technology and are figuring out what they need to build their business or to fix problems they have, and then not letting an IT department get in the way. And an example I'll talk about, um, you know, we wanted to have proactive chat on the PGI website. Um, and so we went, we engaged our IT counterparts. Um, they kind of put us through a six-month RFP process, which took way too long, but we ended up with a, uh, a solution that was picked. And I said, okay, when can we get it implemented? And they said, well, it's going to be at least another six months to negotiate the contract. And, and to me, that was unacceptable. So that day, I went online. I did a little bit of research. I found a chat tool called Olark. We had it implemented the next day. And within 12 months of having chat up on our website, uh, we, we had generated over $100,000 of revenue that just originated in chat. And the tool itself, I think, cost less than $1,000. So as an example, uh, avoiding bottlenecks, figuring out how to get around those traditional processes that will get in the way of your success. Uh, building a relationship with sales. This is, this is really personal to me. I'm actually a marketer who's also run sales organizations. Um, you know, in a lot of companies, uh, sales and marketing kind of looks like this. There's this wall between the groups. But when people look at organizations where, where, where sales and marketing are aligned, they basically get better results. Um, and and these, these are good stats to look at. Uh, but, you know, if you are able to grow your revenue and grow your profit faster than companies who are not aligned well with sales and marketing, uh, that makes the case to, to reach across the aisle to your, to your counterpart in the sales department. Um, what we would do, uh, I actually oversaw sales and marketing, which was great because um, my marketing director was talking to my sales manager on a daily basis. And really that meant that the, the sales manager was telling them if the leads were good or bad, then the marketing director could optimize those campaigns based on the feedback from sales. And we were able to, on a daily basis, get better at what we were doing, on a daily basis. And, and so that's really important if you run, if you're, whether or not you manage, you're a marketer who manages the salespeople, to be reaching out to your sales team on, on a regular basis to get that ongoing feedback. Um, being transparent. Uh, this is very important because if you think about the finance department in your company, here's what finance thinks marketing does with money, right? Marketing is a cost center. Marketing just burns through all of our free cash flow, right? Um, it's very important for marketers to be transparent, almost overly transparent, and to teach the company, and particularly the people who control the purse strings, purse strings like the executives, teach that company uh, what marketing is spending their money on. Uh, and there's tons of metrics today, right? So we would uh, create all kinds of reports for our financial uh, peers, and so they really understood what we were doing and why we were doing it and what the results were and that we were constantly getting better. And what would happen was suddenly the finance guys were coming to us and saying, hey, Jeff, there's an extra you know, $100,000 uh, in surplus. We think you should spend this in digital marketing. And that's very rare to have finance people coming to marketing and actually saying, hey, marketing, spend more money. But it was all because we were being very transparent in the way we were, we were communicating the, uh, the value of what we were spending money on. Um, I love this uh, picture. This is from the movie Glenn, Gary Glenn Ross, uh, famous scene. Uh, but for marketers, I don't think it's always be closing, but it's always be testing. It's always be testing. Um, we use a tool called Optimizely at, at PGI, and one of the things we were able to see, we would, we would do things always experimenting on the website. How do we drive higher conversions? And this is one um, experiment we did. We found that pages with just uh, video thumbnails on them just video thumbnails on them would drive uh, almost 500% more conversions than pages without video thumbnails. So if you ever go to the PGI site, you see there's video thumbnails everywhere because we studied it and we figured out that uh, just having those video thumbnails got people more engaged with the website. So, so you have to look at your website, you have to look at your digital presence and, and really always be testing, always figuring out how do I get more out of the traffic that I, that's currently visiting those pages. Um, and, and really the, the final point, and this is a famous quote from, from Mitt Romney when he was running for president, I like being able to fire people. Um, I, personally, I, you know, I've had to fire probably more people than I would have ever wanted to fire in my career. And I, I fired a lot of people at PGI when I started there because it was uh, a lot of you know, great people but maybe the wrong role or the wrong fit. Um, and we had to make some, make some pretty significant changes. We turned over almost the entire team. 
Um, and, and that was really hard to do, and I hated doing it in some ways. But at the same time, uh, it, it really enabled me to build a great team, right? To build a team that I knew could get us to the next level. Because uh, the, at the end of the day, there's something important that uh, we all have to realize. There's all this great technology out there, but you can never really automate the role of marketing. You can't. It's impossible. I mean, the software that's out there, um, without the right person, without the right person working the software, is really going to be useless. Um, so I, I was very lucky uh, during my three years at, at PGI. I got to build a, a great sales and marketing organization. You could see... Um, See my team here uh, in this picture, uh, but they, you know, they really taught me an important lesson about about uh, having an effective marketing program. Is that if you have the right team, there's really nothing you can't do. There's nothing you can't do. And so when I looked at what we accomplished there, we we overhauled that awful website I showed you earlier into a great website that was a responsive website as well. Um, we increased almost every trackable metric you could increase, leads, cost per lead, our build revenue. Um, this is my favorite chart, you know, over a three-year period. This is our revenue growth. I actually took the revenue numbers off, but it was pretty significant uh, how we were able to continually get better, continually grow our revenue uh, to the point where, uh, you know, we were, we were one of the higher performing teams within the company. Yeah, and we actually created a logo that people could read. Um, so, so uh, that's that's my story here. Kind of boiling it down to just seven key points: focus, quick wins, avoiding bottlenecks, building the relationship with sales, being transparent with your organization, testing, and building the right team. Uh, and those are the keys to uh, to not suck at digital marketing. Because at the end of the day, you know, I know we all take a lot of pride in our career. We want to feel like we're doing an awesome job. So. That's, uh, that's my time today. Feel free to, to keep in touch. Um, you know, here's uh, some of my contact information. And with that, I will uh, turn it back over to you, Mike. Thanks, Jeff. I'm sure attendees have a much stronger idea of how to survive in this digital age, but you didn't answer every question. I've got several good questions from our audience teed up for you. And I'd like to remind our audience it's not too late to ask your own question by typing it into the questions box in your GoToWebinar controls. Before we get to the questions, I'd like to tell you about a new Agile marketing video course of mine. Marketing has traditionally used long-term planned campaigns, often change just once per year. Today's marketing needs to turn on a dime when customers' needs change or your competition changes. Agile marketing helps you identify what's working and what isn't so that you can do more of what's bringing you sales. Go to bit.ly, bit.ly slash am ecourse for more information. We're about to start firing questions at Jeff, but we need to thank our sponsors once again. Barn Razors, a full-service digital and social media solutions company that builds brands using proven relationship principles and ROI. Gagalamp empowers companies to amplify their social media content by leveraging employees, partners, and resellers. Try Gagalamp for free today. Garris Digital, a full-service digital strategy firm that reaches deeper into the conversation than any other agency anywhere. QA Symphony, a leading global provider of QA testing software for agile developers, named by Gartner as a cool vendor in application development for 2015. Learn more at qasymphony.com. Now on to your questions. Um, I think we've only got time for a couple of questions, Jeff, but uh, the, here's the first one. My company is a lot like PGI. I see that it's complex and confusing for customers, but how do I pr persuade my colleagues? They're used to our marketing sucking. Right. Um, it, it's, uh, it, it's interesting. I think it goes back to my point about the quick win strategy, right? Um, you know, my, my advice would be to Figure out what you can do quickly that will make a difference. So it might just be something like, hey, what if we just redesign our corporate brochure? What if we redo our, our, our sales presentation and do a really good job of that and then track the results? And the results could be as simple as, hey, the sales guys are loving this thing. Look, look, look how they're giving it to clients. They're sending it out. Because um, one of the hardest things to do is to start getting some momentum behind your marketing program. Um, and, and you can't just say, hey, a half a million dollars to go do a big search engine marketing campaign. You can't just do that. But if you show you can do some small things well first, 
and then test your way into optimal programs. You know, one of the things that we're doing now at QA Symphony is we're, you know, when I came in, I decided we're going to lower our marketing spend, especially our, our search marketing spend, because I want to make sure we're getting the value out of every dollar we're spending first, uh, prove the value, and then start to ramp up to a greater level of spend. So um, that's, that's my advice. I think quick win strategy and then test your way into what would be an optimal program. Okay. Um, really quickly, we've got one question. Which dashboard software can you suggest? So there's a lot of good dashboard software out there. The ones that um, you'll probably want to evaluate, uh, Domo is really cool. Um, it's, it kind of takes data from Salesforce, data from spreadsheets. That's a great tool. Tableau uh, I've, I've used in the past. Really good tool. Um, so so I'd, I'd look at probably those two good data is worth evaluating. There's also some open source free versions that are worth, are worth evaluating as well. The thing I would tell you with dashboards, though, is that um, make sure you know what you want to do with them before you buy them, right? Because they're not cheap, especially Tableau and, and Domo are, are, are premium price. Um, but if you, if you have a really good idea of how you want to use those dashboards, what specific reports you want to generate, because really what those tools should do is uh, give you a more efficient way to do what you're already doing. So if you already don't have dashboards that you're doing in Excel, don't get Domo, don't get Tableau, because you need to first develop those dashboards just in Excel. And then what Tableau and Domo will do is Domo, they will um, enhance what you're already doing, and they'll make it easier and more efficient to do what you're already doing. Great advice, Jeff. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks to Jeff for these great ideas, and thanks especially to our audience for your participation and your questions. If any of you had questions that we did not have time to answer, you can email your questions to Eileen, E-I-L-E-E-N, at MikeMoran.com, and she'll be sure to get them to Jeff for the answer. Later this week, we'll send you all a link for the recording of this webinar to listen to again and to share with others. We also invite you to mark your calendars for our next Biznology webinar, B2B Data-Driven Marketing, What You Need to Know Today with Ruth Stevens, scheduled for 11 a.m. U.S. Eastern Time on October 13th. We hope to see everybody back here then. Bye, everybody.